And welcome to another edition of the Wake Up Late with Dougie Show. I'm your host, Dougie Almeida. It is uh, Tuesday night, something like that, April uh, 27th. And I'm joined here by two fa- uh, very funny gentlemen. First, uh, back on the show, he's been on here a few times, Mr. Mike Kaplan. What's up, buddy? Hey, happy to be back and uh, happy birthday to my dad. Today is my dad's birthday, April 27th. There you go. And uh, how great is that? And I'm joining us for the first time, Adam Hunter, who's actually on his way to a gig which of course makes every comic who's sitting at home at a couch happy to see when another comic is rushing to another gig while we're sitting here, sending out our avails, trying to get gigs. And there he is. What's and up? Hey, you're, you're working all the time, bro. I see you like <laughs> crazy. Isn't that, doesn't it, it doesn't matter though, right? Like you could be working weeks and weeks and weeks and you're sitting home that weekend and you look, Oh, somebody's in Vegas. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it's just crazy. And, and salute to your driver and not the lucky gentleman who's going to be able to open for you, uh, one way or the other. It's Jonesy. His name is Jonesy. And, and I share, Mike, by the way, good to see you. Uh, I share your dad's birthday. My birthday is also April 27th. Huh. Happy birthday. Me and your dad. Uh, thank you. Actually, Jonesy is my dad. I didn't realize that he was <laughs> your driver, but great to see you. Dad, sincerely, it is great to see you, Jonesy. It's been a long time. Man, this is been you a long time. Like, you, is this your Frank Zappa look that you're going for here with the whole? I, uh, I, I call it uh, Groucho in the front, party in the back. <laughs> He's actually an Uber driver, Jonesy. He's actually not. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, you see, we're all six degrees of separation here. Uh, that's what happens. It all comes together. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the first time I met you, you, Adam was at the NoHo comedy club or the ha ha yeah. comedy club during one of the NoHo comedy festivals. That's your, that's like your home club. You, you're in that area, right? Generally live in there. Yeah. I love that club. It's a fun club. I remember that. I remember that that was the crazy festival. Some guy like interviewed me and got every single like fact wrong about me <laughs> and apologized, told me he was on mushrooms. And I was like, oh, it's okay, man. He's like, I'm here with a uh, comedian, Bill Hunter. I'm like, Adam Hunt. He's like, uh, you were on uh, Fallon. Um, no, I wasn't. It was just like everything. It was like a bad sketch. You know? But yeah, I saw you right afterward. Yeah, that, that was funny. I saw this guy I said, oh, man, I got to bug him. Come down to Florida, do some shows. We'd love to have you. Uh, that's how you and I met, Mike. Well, so you yeah. referred to us, and you came and did the Tavolino's Room and uh, a few times. Oh, yeah. I had a great time. And I just want to add that I feel like whenever I am on mushrooms, I get everything right. So I don't know if that guy had a bad batch. <laughs> yeah, don't blame the mushrooms. Uh, Adam. You know I mean? you're gonna, it's, yeah, everybody handles things differently. Uh, I think that's the message that Mike's mentioning. And I'm glad to see you drinking tea, Mike. You're reminding me, speaking of parents, you remind me of my mother who always drank tea. And I just always saw that tea thing hanging out of the cup. Because I'm a coffee guy, and I think it's got to be coffee, but it's tea. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, what if what if I told you that it is actually a tea bag, but I've steeped the tea in the tea bag in coffee, so it's even. I am your mom and Jonesy's dad. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> and an Uber driver, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and that's the way it's going. Um, hey, uh, we, you know you are a big. You're a big. You're a, you're a judo. Let me ask you, Adam. You're. I watch some of your stuff. You're you're wrestling. Your background's wrestling and a little judo. No, just wrestling. Just wrestling. Uh, rest- I school a little bit in college, and I coach wrestling now. Uh, great, and your and by the way, your daughter your daughter is adorable when she's playing soccer. Um, uh, I'm, th- yeah, it's great. I, I'm a, yeah, I think I wrote something one time. She'll be a goalie because she ran out in the field and picked the ball up. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> she's not supposed to use her hands. No. Nah, uh, yeah. Whenever I tell her, don't use your hands, she thinks it's funny to use your hands. It's like, you know, funniest thing. And then she'll instruct all of the kids to use their feet. <laughs> I boss them around. I'm like, okay, she's, she's, she's too funny. That's um, hilarious. Uh, uh, well, sports with that great weekend of the UFC, if you, obviously those fights, a lot of leg breaking, uh, mm-hmm. consecutive fights where people got their leg broken. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I know I know, Mike is not a big pugilist. I know Mike is not a uh, – I don't even know if Mike's ever been in a fisticuff before. 
I, I would say one fisticuff, though. Yeah, I would say that as a comedian, people have often told this. I, I'm sure that you get this as well when people who are not in comedy are like, uh, is it break a leg? But but don't really break. Don't really break your leg. But I guess they they didn't say that to the fighters this weekend. No, they said break them damn legs. <laughs> uh have you ever uh, have you ever seen that live? Have you ever seen ever, have you ever been next at a sporting event or heard somebody get their leg broken? It's very chilling experience. Uh, I have not though. My girlfriend uh, a year and a half ago did break her ankle, uh, which was uh, her leg bone in two different. I think two different leg bones, the tibia and the fibula, both like had pieces snap off, and I wasn't there for it. But I did. Uh, I learned what it felt like and it was not good yeah. and that's amazing that your girlfriend's a ufc fighter adam um <laughs> <laughs> your, your parent your family's going to uh anything like that in wrestling because i mean it's a little more different um yeah, no, I, do, and I tore my acl uh and it just feels like someone just like shot you in the leg like your leg just goes out uh and you have like no it's almost like you're like a, a, new, a newborn deer yeah. where you just and it's uh it's horrible i mean it was like it was an awful because i at first i i tore it but i wanted to like deny to myself that i tore it like oh i'm fine i'm fine Walking and then I, like a shot and my leg completely just gave out and then i had to do it's not even like like it hurts it's the year rehab that's the pain in the ass like yeah. just three four days a week and i had like kaiser permanente so they put me with a bunch of like middle school and high school kids and getting their rehab together. And I was the creepy old guy, like asking about their prom and stuff, and, <laughs> you know, make, making bad jokes about each other and like making fun of somebody. You know, that was, that was brutal. That was actually brutal. That's funny. I popped a hamstring once, which that's brutal. It's like, you feel it. It snaps. Like you said, you know, you fit for a second there and this is warming up as I was playing soccer. I was the goalie and I'm sitting there just trying to get in that last minute, little stretch. And then I popped pop one. Oh, and I had that second where I went, oh, this I can walk this off. This is, <laughs> you know, that took a few steps, and I was like, oh, uh, a brutal pain. Uh, uh, you know, we talk about uh, sports and uh, athletes. You know, uh, last week uh, LeBron James was, uh, I shared this guy where he tweeted and deleted. Um, we, you know, we know the story. You know, pointing out the officer and and making a certain reference to the officer. Uh, you know, uh, and I hate to make this all about sports, Mike, uh, up at this point, but. Um, you know, but you're a willing participant. I, I don't know. I mean, are we, are we in that, do really sports and politics mix? Uh, I'm I'm happy to field this one as a I don't I don't know all of the things about sports, but I do know as a comedian, uh, I feel like comedians are another category of people who often weigh in on politics online and are often told uh, to stop it. So I think that uh, to be consistent, you know, any any entertainer, any human being like everyone has the the right and perhaps even the responsibility to share what they feel. Uh, about what's going on, you know, in the country, in the world. Uh, and so I think that uh, I don't know if I, I would I'm on the side of people speaking their mind and saying what they want and not on the side of people saying, uh, would you please stop doing that and stay in your lane because I only want to see you do the thing that I pay you money to see to do. You know, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm with LeBron, I guess, like me and LeBron are the same. Wow, that's the first. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Adam. Yeah, I can separate it. You know, like even if I don't agree with someone's politics, if they're a really good athlete, they play for my team. I'm like just a fan of them and their team. And some people are like, "Oh, I'm not gonna ever support the NFL because they're not." I'm like, man, like people could have their opinions, and whether I believe with them or not, it's like it really makes no difference whether or not I support them as athletes. You know, and I think it's, I think everyone's I think everyone's uh, trying to I think everyone's trying to help. Not everyone is helpful, yeah. but every, everyone's heart's in the right place. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's great. Really it's a great way to put it. All at 80 miles an hour, by the way. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> uh, he's doing all that shit. Uh, and I think he's adjusting the rear view mirror for the driver, which is nice <laughs> because when I have, when I'm, when I'm sitting passenger, I usually, you know, I like to, I like to help my driver out. I change the rear. View. I actually ask if you want me to step outside and defog the back window and shit. 
you know, it's, it's really good when somebody's sitting shotgun. Uh, I hate, what's the worst thing somebody's done with you on the road? Like you, you like I, I drive a lot. Like my middle name is Ned, never ending driver. I can drive for like 14 hours straight. So I always end up driving and it's great. Cause I hate when I'm sitting there trying to talk to somebody and they fall asleep for like 80% of the trip. Like, you know you I mean? You take somebody along to drive along, kind of like share the time in the road. And I guess, you know, you know, you got fucking uh, Rumpelstiltskin, you know, or Rip, who's the one who fell asleep? Rip Van Winkle. Yeah. I, I forgot my stories. Uh, I think they all do have to sleep, you know, Rumpelstiltskin, not, not as long, but, uh, you know, it's important. You got to get that eight hours. Uh, well, one time, uh, if the question is what's one of the worst things that's happened while driving, uh, I was coming back from like a college gig in upstate New York to New York City where I live uh, a couple years ago and it was like a uh, winter and it was a heavy snowstorm and I think I was going the speed limit, which I was much faster than I should have been going because of the ice and my car did it. It spun around uh, like 360 degrees and I feel very lucky to be alive because like a car is like whizzing by me. And I wonder what that person's thinking like, Oh, I might be seeing a person about to die. And it just, uh, fishtailed off of the road, like into a ditch. And I got, thankfully I wasn't hurt. And, uh, I got towed out and the car was drivable to get back home, but uh, it was terrifying. I think the other driver was witnessing was probably saying, you know, that comic should just stick to writing jokes and not driving. Uh, uh, I agree with you. And I'll also say, I understand that a person falling asleep in the car with you is also bad. Yeah, I agree. One of the worst things was when uh, this guy was my, you know, the future was driving the gig and he opened up, uh, or you know, maybe I was driving. And he's like, hey, man, you want a, a Jolly Rancher? I said, sure. And then 10 minutes later, or, or half hour later, I'm about to go on stage. And I was already on day quill because I was, I was sick. And I'm like, hey, man, I just drug me. Uh, I'm feeling high as fuck right now. now. And the guy's like, oh, I gave you an edible. <laughs> and I was like, why would you not tell me this was an edible? I'm like, you're the guy who drugged me. And I'm the guy telling you that like, I think someone drugged me. And, he go, and then they were like announcing my name and I had to do an hour completely high off my ass. And uh, man, that was like one of the worst. I mean, it was like an okay set because I told the crowd like, hey, someone gave me an edible. But they thought that was like part of the act. Like, like that was my shtick, you know? And then every time a joke didn't land, I assumed the joke was never funny and that everyone was lying to me the entire time. I got into this like, like oh, it was bad. That was probably one of the worst. That is a bad experience. Holy shit. Um, I drove to the gig and another comedian did a podcast for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Who could top that? Um, well, there you go. Uh, well, listen, it's not as bad as a slap fight. You know, I was watching a buddy of mine shares this thing, uh, uh, this video. Have you seen these people, these professionals? They're, they're, they're professionals. I don't know if you wear this, but they look like they're about to square off and they're about to do like an arm wrestling match. You know, they get up to this bench and there's everybody's rough looking characters these aren't putzes these are people that look like they could have uh you know they could ca they could change a tire you know what i mean uh, you know they could change these guys these people know what they're doing and they stand there give each other this look and they just stand there all of a sudden they they do this thing with their arm like they're doing the uh, sprinkler dance right and then they come across and they smack the shit like and these people have hands that look like frying pans and and i just don't understand how somebody will allow themselves to get smacked and like just take it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like, it's like, I want to fight, but I don't want to get up. <laughs> you know? It's the, the laziest form of fighting I've ever seen. I, I can't really get into it. Cause like, I, like at what, like, I mean, MMA, I love because it's like, it, you know, replicates what would happen in a real fight. But at no point in a fight is anyone just going to sit down and let you smack them. You know? So I don't really understand this one. I, under, I, I agree because, listen, if you're going to learn to, like a martial art, like I've been in the martial arts all my life, you know, you learn, you train, you know, you train not only not to get hit, but what to do if you get hit. You you know, you train, you that's what it is. You get in the ring, you get banged around. So when you do get hit in real life, you're not like, oh, that really hurt. You know, you, you realize, and, right? You, but, but this is a sport where there is no defense. There is like, it's not like, you know, it's like I, it, there's a, there's an actual true Kung Fu discipline called Iron Crutch Kung Fu where the, the, the set, the, they actually learn how to take shots to the balls. They get trained by dropping like sandbags on their nuts and they kick them with the bamboo and the shit. You know, I, I met, I met master gonad 
And I asked him, <laughs> I, you know, I said, how come you have no schools? I've never seen a, a ch- iron crutch Kung Fu school. Like, oh, very hard to retain a student. Uh, <laughs> so I, I can only imagine something like this to be sla- like, how do you sign up for this? You know, like your friend comes over, Hey man, I'm, I'm hanging out with these guys. We got, I got this new sport. It's awesome. There's always a lot of people there. It's packed. You know, what do you got to do? Well, you just got to sit there and let somebody smack the shit out of you. Well, yeah. Like Wayne Perkins used to have a joke about how like they had like the dart championships on ESPN, you know, and he'd be like, man, it's never a good sign when you're the best in the world and you still have a roommate. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of be in that same category. I love the ESPN darts uh, coverage. 45, 142. <laughs> it's fucking great. Uh, Mike? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say I think it makes sense that you're curious about how a person will get involved in this because my understanding is that the first rule of Slap Club is that you don't tell anybody about (laughs) how to join Slap Club. It seems that way. You know, this is a sport that the flip of the coin about who goes first is probably even more important than like the old NFL days where you had it like extra time because basically whoever won the toss was basically going to get the fucking field goal. Uh, you know what I mean? So can you imagine you, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm ready to do this. You flip the coin, you take second. Ugh, you know, I got to get hit first. And then this guy gets a free shot. I don't know. There's got to just be a better sport uh, to try out. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but uh, there's a chicken wing shortage. Are you guys, are you guys eat chicken? You don't eat, are you, are you eat chicken? Do you eat beef, meat, uh, Mike? I am a vegan person. Look how long I went without telling you that I was vegan. And only because you asked. (laughs) But you're jumping out of the seat now. It's awesome. Uh, Oh, yeah. I'm going to talk the rest of the show about it. Sorry, everybody. Adam, go on. Do your show. Eat an edible. Have a great time. (laughs) All right. So you're not mad that chicken wings are, are, uh, are in low supply. No, I'm mad about a lot of stuff, but uh, I guess I don't understand if they're in low supply, but other parts of the chicken aren't. How could it be only the wings? Are there mutant chickens that they, I'll be more mad at that, that they're like, oh, yeah, we had lots of wings, but now they're. But yeah, uh, I am. <laughs> I want I want, you know, like Adam said earlier, you know, everyone's trying to help. Not everyone is helping. I'd love for the the chickens to be helped. So, uh uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm the person to go to uh, with like, oh, man, or, I'm not upset, about, but I, I don't know the whole story. So please continue. Maybe the wings are flying away and leaving the body behind. Uh, mm. yeah, are, you, yeah, are you a vegan as well, Adam? I'm not a vegan, but I think that that's going to suck to people that say they go to Hooters for the wings, right? Yeah. All the guys that are like, oh, yeah, why do you go to Hooters? Oh, because of the wings. Now you're going to have to come up with a new excuse just because I'm a fucking pervert, which is why I'm going, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm always amazed when I meet my friends who are married that don't mind their husbands going to the hoot like who, like when I I do there for like work like business trips and business lunches and stuff, and uh, you know oh, I had went to Hooters my wife uh, you know like I used to do this I used to entertain financial advisors you know trying to like and take them out to the strip clubs and stuff you know like ah oh, you take them to strip clubs yeah of course why well, you go to Hooters you know because their their Hooters wings are not you know they're yeah. they're Hooters wings. Yeah. Only time they're ever good is if there's no strip club in town. <laughs> <laughs> like there was a good Hooters, a good strip club. Girls would be like, "Fuck this! Why am I gonna dress like a, a you know a cocktail when you're at a strip club and not just strip and make eighty five times the amount of money and at Hooters?" You know, and so I, I always find it weird. Also, if you go to Hooters you see, and you see like a a couple and their kids, yeah. you know, girls are like signing autographs, you know, like on their calendar. Like the whole thing is just bizarre it's it's very like uh i don't know i i, I never old hooters things to be honest that is interesting it is not interesting when you sit there and you watch a whole family and they got the <laughs> color they got the color in books and the little kids like what color is nipple um, <laughs> <laughs> what color should i use it in my crayon dad um for the nipple um yeah that's any a- color you want <laughs> be creative <laughs> son i'm just glad you like the nipple um, I'm glad you're attracted to it, kid. Uh, I guess I'll buy, I'll paint your room blue. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, if, if it's not chicken wings, what would be a shortage? What's your favorite food? What would you flip out if you couldn't get? Uh, well, I've been, uh, I'd like to think that as long as there is food that I can eat, I'll be grateful for it. I'll say that I like, uh, 
I'm a big peanut butter fan. If there was no peanut butter left, uh, that would be, you know, some sad jelly sandwiches, some sad half, you know, peanut butter cup uh, chocolate situations. Like I, I would make do, but yeah, big, big peanut butter guy. That's a good one, actually. Yeah. My, my dog f- feels similar. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But a lot, lots of guys would be lonely and their dogs would be missing out. <laughs> suicide. Peanut butter would cause suicide in the male population. Uh, Adam, what's your favorite food? Uh, I'm like an ice cream guy, which I never understood. Like at McDonald's, they like won't serve like flurries or like McFlurries or milkshakes after 1 a.m. Like, I never really understood that rule. Really? But, yeah, like you ever go to McDonald's, like you come back from a late road trip and you're stoned, and you're like, oh, I want to get a milkshake. Like, oh, sorry, you know, like we don't serve me after one. Like, what happens to the milkshakes after one? Like, I just, it's not even a joke. I just get annoyed by that. I don't, I don't have a punchline. Uh, well, you don't need one. I'm pissed off too. I don't, I, I want to go to McDonald's <laughs> and complain. I, I want to go there after one just to find out what the fuck the deal is. You know, I want a goddamn McFlurry. Um, well, uh, Parmesan, anything Parmesan would upset me if there's a cheese, a cheese shortage. Um, all right. What do you think's the biggest enemy of comedy, of uh, comedy gentlemen? What do you think the biggest enemy of comedy? Hmm. It's I mean, a, for, go ahead, Adam. Well, I, I think yeah, is the biggest enemy of comedy because I think comics you know, we're so, you know, we, we all want validation and it's the easiest way to get validation is to put like a joke on Twitter or a joke on Facebook or a set on Twitter. And then you immediately get canceled for that joke. So I feel like any type and you almost can't really blame the, uh, the people because they didn't sign up for a comedy club. They signed up for Twitter, you know? So, but I think at the same time, it's like, you see so many comics that canceled because jokes they they put five years ago or seven years ago or eight years ago. So I feel like, uh, I feel like social media probably is the biggest enemy to comedy. Wow. At, the same time, at the same time, it helps make comics put ass in seats. So uh, I'm kind of torn on that answer too. It's a yin yang. Yeah. I've, uh, I got, I got it. I think it's uh dance. You know, because uh, everyone's just going out to watch dance instead of comedy. It's got to be, uh, if it's the enemy, it's the competition. Uh, a sincere answer. Uh, like, I, I honestly think that comedy is so versatile that, like, whatever whatever potential enemies there are, like, it's sort of like, you know, like in 8 Mile, you know, Eminem, uh wins because he like you know the goal of a rap battle is to destroy the other person but he you know aims it at himself and i feel like anyone any comedian like you know if you make a mistake if you say something that people don't like if people get mad at you like it's possible to you know uh change your mind it's possible to say something else it's possible to grow it's possible to make an art it's it's possible to use comedy like on anything including you know potentially whatever its own opposites or enemies are so i feel like i feel like there's no way for like the idea that comedy could be you know defeated in any way is itself a funny idea to me You know, you know, I'm really disappointed. I wish you would spend a little more time be, trying to be a little more elaborate when you want to make a point, Mike. You know what I mean? Because it's just so vague, you know, <laughs> leave everything out there for interpretation. Um, you know, I, I think, if anything, sex is the enemy of comedy because, uh, you know, if you're having sex, who gives a shit about having fun and laughing? Uh, although sometimes it happens at the same time. There's laughter during sex, at least in my bedroom. Um I don't know. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of laughter, uh, uh, rest in peace, Mr. Carl LeBeau, who passed away. Uh, 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 you know, uh, you know. Here's the thing: I'm always amazed. One of the best things about comedy for me is I've been in is meeting people. You know what I mean? Like just get to meet the people and everybody. The, the variance of people that are in comedy, right? Like all kinds of people. This isn't like this isn't like a brotherhood. I'm sorry, or a uh, uh, how would I say? Um, help me, Mike, on the word. Oh. Absolutely. I don't, I don't uh, want to sound like I mean, a misogynist asshole by saying, <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to try to make, I want to encompass everybody here. This community, this camaraderie. Thank you. Uh, within this com- this community, you know what I mean? There's all types, right? You know what I mean? It's not like we're all eight foot four, you know, four, or we're all like ground fighters with cauliflower ears. You know, we, we all have our, yeah, I know. Uh, you got cauliflower ears from, from the, from the wrestling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. 
Mike's ears. Let me see your ears, Mike. You never had. You don't have no cauliflower ears. Uh, I, I don't think. I so can't even see them goddamn ears. Jeez. Every. All right. There you go. Look at that. See, he's never been choked. Well, by a guy at least. It's true. Uh, I thought, um, <clears throat> but uh, but Carl, you know, is a guy. I, I, met, I met this guy at the Laugh Your Asheville Comedy Festival, and I, when you it's great when you meet this, I met this guy, and he he acted, he treated me like he's known me for twenty years. You know, it's like right off the bat, it was like holy shit, this guy. You know what I mean? And now I got to know him over the years, and I was able to see him at the Laugh Factory a few weeks ago when I was there with Tom Rhodes, and he came into the green room, which is awesome. And I'm pissed. I think you know. Get to take a photo with him because he was just a great guy, and uh, so he'll be missed. And you know, it's tough. Oh, you can probably Photoshop something. <laughs> yeah, I'll fill in a fake uh, TV credit or some shit. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, um, by the okay. way, it's time for. Uh, go ahead. Who's gonna say? Oh, I, I just can I say a quick thing about Carla Bove as well. Yeah. I. Uh, I, I think I opened for him. I, I don't remember how long ago now, but uh, he was like you said, like the most. Uh, you know, sort of authentic, just like, like, like we're all brothers. I feel like the another guy who was like that to me was like Larry Miller. Like when I opened for him, he didn't know me. He's a famous millionaire, I'm sure. And he's just like, we all just get to do this. And isn't that amazing that we are all brothers in this? At, at the time, we were all men in that room. And uh, we were all, you know, we're all people, humans, sib we're all siblings in comedy. And so I guess, I don't know if it's uh, just him and Lebov like really both had that energy. So I feel like uh, uh, bald men, you know what I mean? Like I'm on my way. Uh, they really, they really feel uh, that kinship and and express it, and it it's really beautiful. And what a uh, I just uh, I watched a bunch of Carl Lebov videos the other day. Uh, you know when when I found out, and uh, it's just he's a a wonderful man, incredible storyteller, right? I mean, yeah. Uh... He, he was in L.A. a lot. I, mean, I know he's in Vegas for many years at, uh, towards the end there. That's why I kept running into him. But um, but just, you know, part of uh, Sam Kennison's tour, you know, that there's some stories there. Uh, you know what I mean? But, you know, you've been you guys been doing it a long, a long time. I think I think you start to feel that at a certain point. Right. When you're maybe in the 20th year. When does that happen when you just feel like, you know, you're not at because I'm, I'm in my 13th year and I'm still like, hey, when when is my door? When You know what I mean? Like, I, I, you know, I still feel like I'm the new guy. You know, I'm like, I don't you know, I'm like, hey. You know, I don't feel like I'm at that level. Like, you, like when you go into a green room where you guys are at, I almost like, oh, can I come in? You know what I mean? I still at that level. You know what I mean? I don't want to, you know, come in and shit like that. But when do you reach that point where you're like, you know what? I feel good. I feel like I am part of this community. Adam? Uh, I don't know, man. It depends. I mean, you know, you always, depends, it depends who I'm with, to be honest. Uh, sometimes younger comics are a lot nicer, you know, a lot more respectful. Um, and then you get guys who are just all about like the scene or whatever. I, I think a lot of times after, you, <laughs> after I perform and like I have a good set and then you know, you can bond with somebody or uh, it's weird. LA comedy is a strange thing. I, you know, I started in New York and, you know, I was giving out flyers for five years. I in Times Square and we definitely had a, it was like me and like Dave Rubin and, Melissa Roush from the Bank Theory and all these all these people and we just it was a grind, a grind and grind. They came out to, came out to LA and it really depends who we're, who we're with. But I definitely feel like there's I mean there's definitely like a certain type of uh, I don't know, I don't I, I have no idea. It's not, that's a weird question. Um, I'll answer it. It's uh, year 14. You're almost there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Another... <laughs> Thanks. I'll just have to wait for the next few months for that feeling to come along. Uh, but I appreciate that. All right, guys, it's time for the, the news is a joke. This is where we talk about stories and try to make some jokes out of it, make some fun of it, come up with some quips. Shit, you know, hey, you may even come up with your next closer. Uh, but if it is said on the show, it's physically owned by me. And if you put it on any t talk show or anything i collect revenue no i'm only kidding i don't give a shit uh man bowls a perfect game with his ball containing the ashes of his father um interesting you know that's that's a headline that catches the uh uh you guys ever bowl i 
I do. I do enjoy bowling. Uh, my grandmother bowled uh, for. Uh, most of my, like when I was a child, like she had a bowling league that she was a part of. So that was like my first, and she just, she died last year as well. So it's nice to, the, the link of bowling and death. Uh, but I guess, I guess what about this story, the only thing that I would say is there's like one thing maybe keeping it from being a completely perfect game. And that would be uh, your father being alive, I, I would hope. But uh, <laughs> second best. That would be great, right? Instead of the ball coming up after the perfect game is, his father comes flying out of the ball return. Dad, he's risen. He's <laughs> out of the ball return. That would have been pretty cool. Adam, you want to ask? I don't know. I mean, it's a weird, like, guy, like, fingered his father, you know. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he must have had some anger towards his dad. Uh, if he's just fucking throwing him. I mean, but at the same time, his dad probably was going with his dad. His dad was super proud of him. And, uh. That's awesome. Good for him. Uh, by the way, the last question, I think when I did this, when I did the Tonight Show, the second time I did it, I felt like I was actually like something that they can't take away. <laughs> every time I do, every time, no matter where I'm, I always feel like they can always remove what I'm doing. But when you get certain milestones you do in comedy with this Tonight Show and last comic standing, I feel like they couldn't take that away. Yeah. So that's probably when I felt like I actually like like made it to the big leagues, I guess. I definitely, uh, think, Pudge, I definitely think that's a great point of saying once you got that, you both have it. Yeah, you, know, you both been on late night talk. You know what I mean? You, you so that's I think that's definitely a good thing. Like, hey, I've been here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think that's definitely a great point. Uh, but I, I, if I may, just uh, just for fun, I like that. Once you do late night, they can't take it away from you unless they look at a tweet from last week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That just opens yeah. the drain pipe and lets it all go away. Uh, right. Absolutely, great point. Uh, yeah, and it was funny with the story, by the way. He did use part of his father's ashes, ashes uh, and it was put in the thumb hole. The guy does the two-handed bowling where he fingertips and doesn't put. So he's, he is not fingering his father. Uh, so he, okay. he had, Yeah, so thank God that's not happening in the bowling alley. But, you know, like, you're right. Like, what is this? Is he going to keep this ball forever? Like, you know, the, is, are you going are you gonna, to, like, go to, like, a Salvation Army and go, hey, a size a 15-pound ball looks pretty good. Like, why can't I put my thumb in there? Uh, uh, I I think that uh, the you said he only used part of the ashes, so I think the other ashes he's going to put into a microphone, become a comedian, and then go to the Laugh Your Ashesville Off Festival. <laughs> it's a callback. Uh, see, that's why you guys are accepted in the <laughs> circle. Um, our next story: Michigan woman glues eye shut uh, after mistaking nail glue for eye drops. Um. You know, who hasn't done that? Like, I mean, who hasn't been in a knife fight in, uh, in middle school? And uh, who hasn't? Um, yeah, I mean, basically the story read the woman, uh, was, her eyes burned a little bit. So she went to get some eye drops, what she thought was eye drops. And she grabbed the glue. And, you know, I, listen, I would never want I would I would see that. I'm the kind of person I'd look at those two and I go, wait a minute. These two bottles should not be in the same carrying purse. You know what I mean? <laughs> One needs to be way over there. And one needs to be, I mean, it's okay if you mix up the salt and pepper, they kind of look alike. One has an S at the top. The other one has like a, like a speaker, you know, with a, you, you, oh, okay. I put salt and pe- you, you can live with that, but you know, putting the, uh, the, uh, the super glue in your eye. Yeah. I mean, I did that one time. I, I replaced the my gorilla glue with lotion and I jerked off <laughs> and, uh, I was stuck for a week in the ER. It's horrible. Come on. Awful. <laughs> Gorilla. I mean, some, I don't know. I think there's easier ways to not have to think about your your husband when you're fucking him. You know? <laughs> I use Sensodyne t- toothpaste because I'm so sensitive. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. I, my penis hasn't had, hasn't had cavities in months. My, my, <laughs> my testicles are free of tartar. My and wife and I, we actually do use CBD sex lube. Have you, have you used that? No. Yeah, there's like there's marijuana sex lube. They have it. Uh, it's great. I highly recommend it. Uh, I mean, the joke I wrote was my dick got the munchies, but but like, but like, but but for real, like, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's good stuff. Yeah. But for real, my dick did get the munchies. It's yeah. true. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, all right. So, I guess, I, I yeah, I guess it works. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, really? I mean, that's a good one. I have to remember that. Oh, by the way, yeah. My, <laughs> And now my wife's breath is minty fresh. I just want to throw that little punch in there as well. <laughs> um, 
And that was, by the way, that's a funny story. I did that joke at Bonkers in Vegas years ago. And my wife's friend, who's not a comedian, she's very fun witted. You know, after the, she comes up to me, she goes, say this, you know, and my wife's breath, minty fresh. I'm like, you know, you, you guys you ever find it easier to write jokes for someone else besides yourself? Yes. It, that sometimes it is that way. Um, like, you know, somebody tell me a joke and I'll be like, this is, it's a good joke, but you, here's how it's not worded correctly or take away that or, or like edit this part or, you know, you're, you're giving away the punchline here. Um, it's a lot easier than for myself because I don't know why, I don't even know why. I just, it's, sometimes it's a lot easier for me to adjust somebody else. Mike? So. Oh yeah. I, uh, I, I love like when I'm on a show and when I'm like watching other people off in the beginning of my set, I will like have taken notes of like, you know, tag ideas and just sort of like, you know, continuing to live in the world of, uh, of the jokes that they created. And so, I mean, it's sort of just like when it's not just your own brain, you know, when you're like, Oh, that's how that person thinks. Uh, then it opens up brand new avenues. Yeah. If they think differently than you and can be like, Oh yeah, you should try this or stop doing comedy or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. No, I like watching other people bomb when I write the jokes for them actually. Cause then it's like, aha, <laughs> yeah. you zoom ahead of them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah you, you <laughs> Those fools. Yeah. <laughs> now you know how I got on the late show. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I was always, I was always, I always thought I, it's kind of weird because I've, I've been on both sides of that. Um, like I had Sam Morell, very funny comic, right? Uh, I, I worked with him one time at uh, Belushi's or something like that. And he, and he, he, he says, Hey man, try this, you know, one of my jokes, you know, say this instead of this. And I did it and he crushed, right? You know I'm like, Oh, so I was, you know, I'm like, Hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much. You know? And I've done that. I, I, I go to open mics. So I see younger comics. I'll say, Hey man, you know, like you said, cut it down. This is funnier. This is probably a quicker word. Right. And you give it. But I also watched one time I was with Jim Florentine and this open mic comic walks up to me and goes, Hey Jim, I, I have some tags I want to, I want to share with you. And Jim's like, all right, thanks buddy. Just wait over there in line, you know, go, go over there in the rookie <laughs> line. Go, go over there in the rookie line and hang out over there. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's something you guys do that. You do that for other comics. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it, how do I say this? Is it rude to do that to another comic, especially a really funny comic? Yeah, yeah. It, I think it's very rude to go up to another comic and be, unless they ask you, unless, unless, unless you know them. If you know them, it's one thing. But if you go, if a random person goes up to you, go, hey man, I got some jokes for you. It's like, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, like, I don't know. It's just kind of like, but also on how good your set went. Like okay. the last thing you want to do is like bomb and have somebody come up to you and fucking hey try this and it's some shitty <laughs> yeah you, know, you, seem like you, you seem like you need some help uh yeah yeah that's how you're right great point mike uh yeah i mean f if you know the person and you're friends with the person and you have a relationship with the person uh even then like you know whenever i if i see a friend or somebody who i know you know well enough and we're friendly like if i think of something and i think it's fun like i'll usually ask them like hey would would you like uh, to know an idea that I thought of that you could use if you want to. And then like some people are just like, I want to write all my own stuff and, uh, and they'll let you know that. Uh, but I'd say most of the time when I ask like, would you like, and, and I'm mostly not, I'm, it's mostly, uh, you know, sort of like peer to peer or if it's like, you know, younger so, people who are, you know, who know what they're doing, but like, I'm not offering advice to, uh, you know, any, but like if I'm opening for somebody, I'm probably not necessarily, unless they ask again, like Adam said, but yeah, I would say asking the question like, Hey, uh, would you like to hear this idea is always uh, a fine way to go as opposed to assuming that you're entitled to offer something. Well put again. Thank you. Um, thanks for asking. You're welcome. And that's, I try to edify our listeners and we try to make them laugh. We try to edify them and say, you know what, uh, no, I got a thousand uh, if, pairs of Amazon. I can care less what anybody thinks. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. um, any rate. So, and by the way, Adam, you were just here in Florida, right? Did you just leave? Yeah, I literally, I just came back. I got back yesterday. I was in Boca. At the uh, Boca Black Box. Nice room there. And you yes. did some of the, did, how, how was the turn on some of the other rooms? Because those are newer rooms. Um, It was okay. It was like, I think they said I did a lot better than a lot of the other comics, which was nice here um uh but one of the new one of the rooms was just like just acquired um but the one in boca did pretty good we got about like i think like 80 people 
on yeah. Saturday night. Nice room. Nice, nice turnout. Nice room, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other rooms I know the other rooms are just starting. You know, I think what somebody was telling me, there's like six people. I'm like, you know, what's, yeah. the, small, what's the smallest crowd you ever performed to, Mike? Uh, I one time had a college gig, I think uh, Monmouth in New Jersey. Uh, I just started doing colleges like around man, 2008 or so. And I I showed up and I think it was like a 7:30 show and at 7:30 the only two people there were the uh, one of the students in charge who was not even the student that booked me that that person had a class at the time and then their advisor so those two were there then uh, that w- so if we started then it would have just been those two people who booked me then uh, my dad showed up because he lived not too far away and he had two friends with him. So my dad and two friends were there. Then two students showed up. So about five after showtime, uh, there were seven people in the room, three of them, my dad and his friends, two of them uh, working there had to be there and two students. And I said, by the end of it, uh, over the course of the show, there was about a dozen people came in and out. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would say, I mean, you know, like probably I've done a show for two people. <laughs> Yeah, that could be. Uh, sometimes it works out. I remember did so, at the old Fort Lauderdale Comedy Club. I did a uh, a show. I think we had four people there, and there we just we just basically walked up to the table and just did a joke. I don't know did we lose Adam or not, um, but if I not, saw, yeah. seems pretty perplexed. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> he got him frozen. Uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get him back. Um, he looks like he just took another edible. Ha ha ha! Anyway, we're back, Adam. Nice little camera angle there. And uh, if you missed that, it, uh, but here's our next story: Groom goes to the wrong wedding venue, uh, nearly marries a stranger in Indonesia, and who hasn't done that? Uh, I think that's a travel tour you can get on one of those tours. Marry a stranger in Indonesia costs like thirty eight hundred dollars. Well, it's uh, like the marriage can only get better from there. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so. I I know some places. I, I don't know if Indonesia is a place where they do arranged marriages, but I know where there are arranged marriages. You know, sometimes you meet somebody on the day of your wedding, and because of that, because you don't have any specific expectations other than we're going to work together to grow this, arranged marriages often end up, you know, being stronger and longer lasting, and you grow to love each other in ways. And this isn't a comedic take at all, but. Uh, I think if that man married that uh, that stranger, it could have been, like, let's check back in 30 years and see if he's, how happy he is. Probably, they'll probably end up giving birth to the Antichrist, um, you know, one way or the other. Uh, if, if you just met a woman, you had to, you had to meet her on your, ma- your wedding day, uh, what would be a deal breaker when you saw her? Hmm. Adam? Uh, probably a cock. <laughs> um, yeah. but uh growing out of her forehead yeah i mean i don't know I, I, uh would be a dicker to be honest i mean i think there are so many things would be a deal breaker i mean i mean i have to be attracted to the person right all right let me let me ask you this Who, what what relationship did you end for the most let's say you know bullshit reason like you know what i mean the the, the, the most shallow reason why, why did you break up with somebody with the most shallow reason you broke up with them Hmm. I'll start it while you're thinking. Bad breath. I remember going on the third date with this girl. And I was kissing her, and she had bad breath for the third day. First time you give her an excuse. All right, maybe you know she had some you know food. It's been a day. Second time, like, all right, well she's hot. You know she looks like uh, you know she's pretty hot. She looks like a Hooters waitress. And uh, third time, that was it. I ended the date, and I went home. Any recollection? Have you I, ever have you ever broken up with a woman, Mike? Have you always been in other words? Ha! <laughs> a fine question. I, I mean, I don't know if it, the the ones that spring to mind. Uh, like I broke up with a woman once because she wanted children, like three in the next several years, and I wanted uh, at the time zero in the next more years than that. Uh, and so I don't know if that fits the the shallow range. I 
for a time, I was a person who was interested in uh, open relationships. And so I would uh, sometimes relationships would end if we did not have the same desire for relationship structure, which I think is also uh, a reasonable thing. I mean, certainly there are times when, you know, earlier on I dated people for three months, six months, a year. And at a certain point, like just the chemicals of attraction uh, recede and then you're, you know, left with who you are and you're, you're like, Oh, I was, uh, you know, this is, this is different than I thought. I mean, I was married and that kind of happened. Like I, uh, my, the, when I was married, the, I got married because after a year, that was the first time I ever wanted to keep being with someone. And I was like, well, this must be why, why people get married. Once they make it a year, if you make it to a year, then you make it to the rest of your life. I thought at 25 and then at 28, I thought maybe a different thing. Much different uh, goal than in comedy, of course. Uh, <laughs> better if you get married on a late show, then that's good. Uh, that's not bad. Oh yeah, my my marriage did not make it onto television. <laughs> Adam, now you gotta be careful. Uh, I dated a girl one time and found out she was a prostitute, um, uh, and it still wasn't a deal breaker. To be honest, I, I felt like I was, uh, I felt like I was getting free stuff. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. but uh, a deal breaker. Uh. Yeah, I mean. Hmm. I don't know. I, I've, I've dated girls that were alcoholics or into meth or, uh, you know, it, I had one girl break up with me because she found she realized she was a lesbian, like while she was with me, uh, which wasn't a, you know, a great, that wasn't that comforting to be honest. Yeah. Um, but, uh, to realize not only this girl not attracted to me, but not attracted to any man because of me. Uh, I feel like I, I let down the whole, like the whole gender. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I, it hasn't really been, I had one girl, uh, I mean, I've had girls with like smelly vaginas. That That's a deal breaker because it's Definitely. hard to tell somebody they have a smelly vagina. Like I went down on a girl one time <laughs> and something tasted kind of tangy and I was like, do you have a yeast infection? And she's like, I don't know, do I? I'm like, well, I'm like, what am I, a fucking taste tester? You know, like, it's just not like, so that, but that still wasn't a deal breaker. I just asked her a couple of days if she did have one later and she said, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Hold on. I, I didn't, I didn't want to make her feel bad about let me, it. Let me grab some of that litmus paper. <laughs> it's not looking good. Uh, uh, if I may, Adam, I, I hope this can cheer you up a little, but I, I don't, my guess is that you might not have been the thing that, created that lesbian <laughs> yeah probably not i don't think it was me uh I, I don't think it was me although i don't know maybe i was like maybe i was rock bottom for men maybe i was maybe i was the, like the last the last hope and then they were like Ooh, no way. yeah maybe maybe oh. you were the greatest guy in the world and she was like if this adonis of a man if this beautiful paragon of masculinity and humanity and comedy if this this guy can't do it for me, then no guy will. I, I honestly wish I had you as my life coach. <laughs> I, I feel like I'd be a much happier person. Yeah. But thank you. He never got Appreciate past that. it. Yeah, that, that is a good thing. Yeah, everybody needs a Mike Kaplan on their shoulder. <laughs> um, Japanese man arrested after dating 35 women at the same time. This kid's a genius, by the way. I don't know if you guys got to read the story. But Japanese, he arrested uh, dating 35 women at the same time and getting birthday gifts from all of them. Now he didn't just, he's not an amateur. He's no rookie. He, he didn't he, like, he didn't like he told them all the same birthday. He, he was dating all these women and telling, Oh, my birthday's April 5th. Oh, my birthday's March 10th. So every day of the, every day he went out, he'd had a birthday gift. And I guess my, my confusion is just like, there's that 35 people Months don't even have 35 days. Like, how was he, how was he seeing everybody? Where did they all live? I like, I did read the article and I like, uh, somebody, uh, one, a reader, uh, of this story, uh, commented, he's an awful person, but I envy his time management skills. Yeah. And but why is that? A, why is that a crime? I feel like that's like every girl on OnlyFans does the same thing with a hundred men. Like why? I don't understand what you're not allowed to date 35 people. 
I I think I think it was fraud they said because uh at least on OnlyFans, you are like you're not telling anyone that you're monogamously with them on OnlyFans. So. I don't know. You, you, some of the people that I'm subscribed <laughs> to, they tell me that. So I don't know. If that's. Uh, I I I do th- I do agree that it. I don't know if it is. I mean, lying by itself is not a crime. Telling somebody that your birthday is a day that it's not, I don't think is a crime. But also, nope. it's a different country, and maybe they have different laws. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, we got to stop Asian hate, and <laughs> uh, that person should be allowed to date whoever they want. Exactly. You know, listen. I remember before the internet, I had a you know, I was a player, but who who could do that now? You know, I mean, the the guy was getting turned in by people at the at the places he was going. Like the girl started saying, "Hey, you know, he was here with another girl the other day, and she brought she brought like a birthday cake for him." <laughs> You know, oh, he brought him like a winter coat. Oh, he brought this guy, you know, fucking a, a new pair of nunchucks. Wow, really? You know, interesting gift. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would, I'd like to know the gifts that were given because that would say a lot about them, right? I mean, now, yeah. uh, this also might not be the most important aspect of it, but I did look it up, and he was arrested for potentially defrauding folks, and I feel like. That's what you want to do. Like if some frauding should be the bad thing, defrauding is getting rid of the fraud. Like, Hey, you know, like defogging your window. <laughs> exactly. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. This is uh, this story is, they got to <laughs> lighten, lighten things up. Yeah. You, know, you got, that's... you got to, you got to take a juris, do, juris doctor degree in law to understand why <laughs> you're defrauding. You're right. Defrauding. It's like deflocking, right? Like deflocking the herd. I don't know. Uh, but uh, you know what? Good for that guy. And now he's going to have plenty of dates in prison. Um, and our, one of our last stories here was a woman. Uh, a, when a woman tells her friends and family that her husband was killed by the dog, they become suspicious. You know, it's doesn't it kind of sound like uh, I don't have my homework because the dog ate it? The well, dog ate my husband. It depends what kind of dog it was, right? I mean, yeah. if it was a pit bull, if it was yeah. like a Pomeranian, if it was a Pomeranian, I, I'd, be, I'd have my so. I, I watched the video of the news story, and they got to a certain point where I guess the police were on on the property, and the they were told, you can search for my ex-husband or my husband anywhere you want to, except for in this locked box right here. But anywhere else you can look. And they're like, what was in the box? It turned out, uh, th- I wrote this down because I loved it. Uh, they found the body of the dead man, and the newscaster said, he was shot 10 times, which is obviously something a dog could not do. <laughs> Perhaps twice. Well, why, why are you getting all these news stories? Like, how come, did he get a cheat sheet or something? I didn't get these news stories. I, I, I attached it to the group message. Perhaps you, were, uh, perhaps you were on your way to another gig. When, you, <laughs> <laughs> when I sent that outline out. Um, oh, okay. Damn, yeah, sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, but listen, it's funny because um, you know you're right. You know, or, or you know what they ended up finding? They ended up finding a, a bowling ball in that box uh, that had a 300 ha. winning sticker on it. Um, like yeah. the actually, end of it was seven. The rapper. It was the rapper <laughs> Pitbull. Ha. They called it the dog, but it was the rapper Pitbull. She it. tried to, Florida. She tried to blame her 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 dog, which is a corgi, for eating her husband. Ha. Can you imagine a corgi? Um, what if it really was the dog? That'd be the funny part. Like the plot twist: the dog really did fucking shoot the guy ten times. Yeah, they they go to the house. The dog opens the door. Who do you want to speak to? Holy fuck. <laughs> Dooby doo. Um, well, listen, this has been fun, gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for joining me here today on the Wake Up Late with Dougie Show. And uh, Mike, you know, you're always welcome. You are you are you are you are you are you are the quintessential uh, podcast guest because you got the mic. Yeah, you got the words, you got the time, you know what I mean? I mean, I can, I, I can, I can sit, I can sit here and just shut the fuck up for like 20 minutes as the host and you will carry the show because that's what you do. You're, you're an intellectual, you're, you're, you're a lovely man. And I, I'm glad you got rid of the beard because, ah. you know, I think you look, I think you look, I think you look like one of the lost Beatles, hmm. but, um, 
I appreciate it. And I'll say, uh, you know, I do, obviously, I host uh, my own podcasts, uh, one just by myself and one with a guest. But on the one that I do myself, which is called The Faucet, I do like to just think that you are sitting somewhere just off screen and you've just asked me a question and then I just go for the length of the podcast. There you go. See, uh, I'm glad I'm quintessential in that aspect. And and Adam, uh, thanks for joining us. And you're hey, well, hold on. What is this bullshit? Mike, you're the best. You're the greatest. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then fucking Adam, thanks for joining us. Like, okay, I mean, Mike? at least pretend that I, I know <laughs> my internet stuff. And I know I'm not, I get it. But that, you could have just been like, I Ooh. mean, what the? Fuck, Adam, man. let me let me jump in for a moment and say, Dougie, may I offer you a tag for the way that you just treated Adam? <laughs> <laughs> how, how dare you? How dare you? Jesus. Uh, yeah. was, I mean, I could tell you the only comedy 13 years. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's turning into a roast. Um, well, uh, well, here, uh, with that, all that being said, you know, I, I think you're a funny fucking dude. I want you to come back to Florida to do, by the way, gentlemen, we have uh, the Isla Morada gig is starting again on Sunday. Tavolino's is coming back on my rooms. Uh, so always welcome if you're going to come through Florida. Let me know. Very cool. And if I may, Adam, offer you this one final gift. Uh, you, we, you know, we all, we all hear uh, things through our own filter. And what, what he said to me, he's like, Mike, I like that you have the time to be on a podcast. Not like Adam, who's <laughs> zooming to gig, gig to gig on stage. We can hardly even get the guy. He's just so busy. But yeah. you are reliably sitting at home waiting for the call. So look at that. I, 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 well, listen, uh, uh, Doug, you were here, uh, so I just want to thank you. Had great energy, and uh, and I thought you were funny. Okay, so um, well, uh, I can never do what you do. Uh, those are all keep funny. at it. And and, yeah. and, I, and I will say this, by the way, you came back, by the way, because there are a lot of people on a podcast. You know, you're doing all this shit. You got would have said fuck it, right? Right? I mean, let's be honest. Nine out of ten people would have said hell with it. You know, and I and I wonder, did you did you did, did he did your driver did he say did she say that? He said, no, no, I think those nine or two people are successful. Uh, but me, I'm like fuck it, you know, like because I know what it's like to be in your situation where a guy calls in from his phone and you're like, come on, motherfucker, you had weeks for this, and uh, and it feels really good to be on, on this side, to be honest. So uh, so so thank you, man. Uh, good luck with everything, <laughs> and next time I'm in Florida, uh, I will definitely hit you up, man. Thanks, brother. And safe travels. You guys have a fun time there, man, on your gig. Thank and, you, brother. Uh, you got it. And uh, and again, Mike, thank you, sir. I don't want to say anything else nice about you. <laughs> I, I get it. We'll talk. Oh, he's gone. We can say it all now. So uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, the last time we actually, I don't know, Christmas, we actually got a lot of feedback on the last time you're on. And a lot of people said, you guys, because I, I guess we are very different. You are, you are right. I would say you and I are quite different. There's like, some differences, I'm sure. You know, like genetically speaking, we're so we're humans are similar to chimpanzees and orangutans, so we probably got more in common than we don't. But yeah, we could zoom in on some slight discrepancies. Yes, yes, exactly. I weigh a thousand pounds. You don't. I mean, <laughs> let's start with that one. Uh, but anyway, thanks again for joining us today, my friend. Oh, and, uh, safety always. there, in New York. I'm so glad that the rooms are opening in New York again for you guys, and uh, that scene's getting uh, back at it. And uh, as for me, uh, I'm going to be at the Stir Crazy Comedy Club this weekend uh, in the cam uh, comedy uh, Cactus Comedy Classic competing on Friday night. So come and cheer me on. And I may be at JP's Comedy Club doing a spot if I don't advance. So mm. it's a win-win. It's a win-win, everybody. Uh, but that's it. Thanks again. Anything coming up, uh, Mike, you want to plug? Uh, if people just follow me on social media, uh, at Mike Kaplan, M Y Q K A P L A N. And I do have a new, uh, newsletter that I send out weekly for free. It always has a few jokes in it and other fun things. And then upcoming streaming shows while they're still happening and live shows as they come back. And that's at Mike Kaplan And just, you can always listen to my albums. My most recent one is called AKA and, uh, my podcasts and just, uh, just only listen to me and read what I write and engage with me 24 hours a day. That's all I ask is just to make me your full conscious experience. Very, very considerate of others, Mike. Always. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining us. And uh, Chris, we ready to end this? 
Yes, we are. Brother. I mean, even with that, I mean, Adam was great. I mean, he's not, he's not going to believe I've been saying this for fun, but he was great. I mean, he was, he's funny, quick, like, you know what I mean? I, I should have said all that. You know, <laughs> but I, I just didn't think about it. I, you know, I just felt like, I, I don't know. Was it me? I just felt like oh, he was in a rush. You know what I mean? He had to get, you know, you know, I wouldn't want to be in that spot, I, I'm, but I'm glad he did it. I'm glad we stuck around and uh, he did a great job. Uh, I, I did that. I think he did a great job. Again, a very funny gentleman. Uh, that's it, Chris. Let's take it away. And uh, by the way, we're excited um, <clears throat> next week. Uh, who the hell I got on the show next week? I don't know, but I know I'll say this. Harry Basil is going to be on the show uh, for his birthday uh, coming up, which is going to be great. Because I always wondered, because I was just there and I worked there for the first time. So I don't know. You know, I don't know if I got the thumbs up or not. So I think we're going to announce on the show live whether or not. Where was that? Uh, at the Laugh Factory in Vegas. So, you know. Oh. I think the I've performed in Vegas once, uh, like about 10, 11 years ago, and I believe I was featuring for Harry Basil. Really? Uh, yeah. So it all comes around. Uh, but yeah, so he'll be on the show on May 4th, I think it is, something like that, and, uh, and other things like that. So anyway, guys, stick around. We're going to have great shows coming up. Follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Dougie. Follow us on Instagram at The Wake Up Play with Dougie Show. Follow me at Dougie Dangerous on Instagram and my Twitter handle at Funny Fiduciary. Because it's funny to say fiduciary. Ha. That's it. Chris, we ready? There you go, guys. Thanks very much. Wake up! Wake up! I'm not psycho! Wake up. Wake up. <laughs>